Welcome to How to Build Your Own PC. This course has been designed to give you all the information and instruction you need to successfully build your own PC. By building it yourself, you will not only have a great new understanding of how computers work, but you will also easily save hundreds of dollars on the cost of your new computer. First, I will introduce you to the parts that make up your computer. Then we will build our own computer, step by step and you will learn all about the parts, their locations, and how they connect to each other. The way we will build our computer is a general procedure and can easily be adapted to virtually any configuration. Now let's begin. This is the most important part of the computer system, the motherboard. It supplies all of the electrical connections among various components of the computer. It is very important that you don't unwrap any of the parts before you learn about the danger of static electricity, which we will explain in Chapter 3. I will explain more about its connectors in the chapter, Installation of the Motherboard. This is the fan and heat sink. We will connect it to the CPU and install both as a complete unit onto the motherboard. And this is the CPU, or processor. It is the actual brain of a computer and is responsible for processing instructions and carrying out users' commands. We will be installing a Pentium 3 CPU. If your CPU doesn't look like this, don't worry. There are many different types available, but the way they work and how they install are very similar. This is the DIMM chip or RAM chip we will install. RAM provides the working space for open applications. The storage capacity of RAM is measured in megabytes. This is a 128 megabytes DIMM for high performance. This is our hard drive. We have chosen an Ultra DMA drive because it is fast and inexpensive. Most new motherboards support this type of drive. This hard drive has a capacity of 9 gigabytes. This is the DVD-ROM drive we will be installing. DVD, or digital video disc drives, play not only DVDs, but also audio compact discs, CDs, and CD-ROMs. A DVD disc is the same size as a CD, but DVDs can store about 25 times more information than conventional CDs. A DVD can store 4.7 gigabytes on a single side, or up to 17 gigabytes on a double-sided. This is the floppy drive. It reads and writes information on removable diskettes that hold about 1.4 megabytes of data. This is the video card or graphics adapter. Almost all video cards today feature 2 megabytes of video memory. This video card also has built-in 3D functionality. Intense 3D rendering requires a lot of data to be processed very quickly. Since the 3D chip works very hard, it has its own cooling system, a fan. Here we have the sound card. It is an expansion card that enables a computer to produce sound. Examples of uses for sound capabilities include games, music applications, and interactive educational software like this. This is the network card we are going to install. We are installing a network card instead of a modem because we want to use the system in a network environment. A keyboard and mouse are two of the most inexpensive components attached to any computer system. We will use the PS2 style connectors for both components. And we are going to use standard speakers with a 1 8 inch mini jack connector. The monitor can be the most expensive single component of a PC system. It is great to have a nice and sharp monitor but it's the graphics adapter that controls the resolution of the image and number of colors that can be displayed. If you try hooking up your 6- or 7-year-old monitor on your new AGP graphics card, it may not work. Monitors have gotten cheaper, so it is a good idea to get the biggest size you can afford. Now that we have introduced you to the components we are going to use, check the list of your PC parts to ensure you have enough components to assemble a working PC.